If you suffer eosinophil esophagitis, you must control the condition to prevent its long-term complications. Let's discuss the medications that achieve that, including some that are on the horizon. Eosinophil esophagitis is an autoimmune condition that sometimes responds to dietary changes. If you're interested for more in-depth information about what eosinophil esophagitis is, check out our other videos. Here I want to discuss the medications that are effective in treating it. And the first that we'll discuss is a proton pump inhibitor. Proton pump inhibitors are used to treat GERD. They reduce the acid production in the stomach. So how does GERD relate to eosinophilic esophagitis? It's thought that the GERD ends up breaking down the barrier in the esophagus, and as a result, food antigens are able to seep deeper into the esophagus and produce immune responses. However it works, we see a clear correlation that patients who take a proton pump inhibitor have less acid, and with less acid reflux, we see a lower eosinophil count and improved symptoms. Another medication to try are steroids because they're very effective in reducing an overactive immune system, but they come with side effects. They increase the risk for diabetes, they can cause bones to be weak, and so they're not a practical long-term therapy. Yet studies have shown that eosinophilic esophagitis is a long-term condition, and patients that go on a short course of steroids have good results when they come off those steroids their symptoms flare. So how do we get the long-term benefits of steroids without their long-term consequences? There are two steroids that we can consider using. The first is fluticasone, which is commonly used as a nasal spray, and it's effective for treating seasonal allergies over a long period of time. So we know that it's safe. Instead of spraying it, we ask patients to swallow it so that its effects are felt in the esophagus. The second medication is budesonide. Budesonide is an effective treatment for many GI conditions because it has its effects predominantly in the GI tract. But once it gets absorbed and it goes through the liver, it's rapidly broken down and has very little wider effect in the body. It's usually used as capsules that break down slowly so that the steroid is delivered deeper into the bowels. But here we want it to immediately have its effect in the esophagus. So we ask patients to open it up and mix it with a slurry that includes some artificial sweeteners so it's tasty and sweet and that helps it coat the esophagus and have potent effect there. New steroids are coming to market that are specifically tailored for use in eosinophilic esophagitis. We don't have to MacGyver it by making up the budesonide slurry. But even better would be therapies that target the actual immune mechanisms that cause eosinophilic esophagitis. We know that eosinophilic esophagitis is part of a wider family of autoimmune conditions. And some of those other conditions have already shown good response to a medication called dupilumab. And it's a monoclonal antibody that needs to be injected so that it has its effects. It's proven very effective in asthma among some other conditions. Dupilumab advanced through a next step in the FDA process in the fall of 2020 and may soon come to wider clinical use. Meanwhile, there's even more selective immune therapy that is in phase three trials that we're hopeful will prove effective for treating eosinophilic esophagitis. We talked about several specific medications, but this is meant to be general advice. So take these ideas to your GI team to figure out if any are right for you treating eosinophilic esophagitis. If you found this information interesting, please continue to explore the channel. Thank you and be safe.